In Ross 21.2, we meet with the uh, the passive participle. Now, since we're dealing with the cal stem, this is the cal passive participle, okay? Now, we've learned the active participle already. So let's just remind ourselves of the active participle. The active participle, uh, it has the vowel pattern pe, um, holum. The cope will have sere and dalit. And if you remember, this holum is a defectively spelled holum vav. Uh, and defective spelling just means that normally, if you spell something fully, it has the mater and the vowel point. If the mater is missing and the vowel point is the only thing that's there, then that's a defectively spelled version of the historically long vowel. That's why this holum in all the forms never reduces pokade, pokada, or pokedit, pokadim, pokadot, po, 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 po. It never reduces ever, ever, ever because it's historically long, and historically long vowels are unchangeable, right? Now, cal passive participle, what we need to um, talk about, first of all, is, uh, is the form, and then we'll talk a little bit about the meaning here, okay? Uh, how do we form the cal passive participle? First thing we're going to do is we're going to use the same three root letters that we're using for our paradigm verb, but we need to know what the vowel points are. What's the vowel pointing for the cal passive participle? It's a kamet under root one and a shurik as the theme vowel with root two. Okay? So it's going to be pa kud. Pa kud. So repeat after me. Pa kud. Now, okay, yeah, so, so the semantics here, pokade means appointing or visiting. Let, let's, let's do, we'll do visit. So we're going to use ing typically for our cal active participle. For our cal passive participle, we're going to translate this as visited, visited, okay? So if I have who pokade, that would be he was visiting. If I say who pakud, that would be he was visited, okay? So let me, um, let me just specify this, okay? Uh, anytime I have an active participle with active participles, what does that mean? It means this. All right. So with active participles, anytime we have an active participle, that participle is going to have a gender and a number that matches whatever it's describing. And whoever or whatever that active participle is describing is performing the action of that, that the participle represents. Okay? Uh, so, example, I could say, uh, the jumping bean. Okay? What is, oops, that's just jump. I need to put jumping here. Okay, so the jumping bean. This is my participle. It's active, jumping. What's it modifying? It's modifying the bean, right? And that means that the bean is jumping around, the jumping bean. Okay. On the other hand, if I have something like this, the broken jawbone. Oh, I just can't seem to spell today. I don't know why. It's not broke. Boy, what is wrong with me? Yeah, broke it. Okay. So the broken jawbone. This uh this is a passive participle. Okay. What what is it modifying? It's modifying jawbone. Okay? That's what it's describing. Is the jawbone breaking anything? No. Rather, someone has broken the jawbone, right? Someone has acted upon the jawbone in such a way that it is in a broken condition. So um, passive participles, whatever they're describing, uh, have the action of the participle performed on them, okay, or on it. 
So that's the difference between an active and a passive participle. And that's what this little section is about, is how to form passive participles, and then, of course, we're going to be translating them. So the masculine singular form of the cow passive participle is going to adopt this vowel pointing, pa, kud, long a, shurik, okay? And then to form the rest of the paradigm, I'm just going to take the basic form and go through all of my participial endings. Well, what are the participle endings? The participle endings are the same endings that we use for nouns and adjectives. So once you know this, the rest of the, the forms are easy. What are my forms? Zero, a, t, im, and what? Oh, that's right. Masculine singular, feminine singular, masculine plural, and feminine plural down here. Okay? So I just apply that pattern. Now remember, in the Cal active participle, the feminine singular form was more frequently the one with the tav with the segulate pattern, po kedit. But with the Cal passive participle, the normal comete is actually going to be seen. So I'm gonna, if I add a, oops, I'll go ahead and make that red since I'm wanting to be consistent here. So to make it feminine singular, let's add a comete. The dalit was closing the syllable here, pakud. Now it's got a comet's hay vowel that the Dalit's going to have to slide over and go with. That's going to leave this open and pretonic, isn't it? What do Hebrew verbs like to do with open pretonic syllables? Likes to reduce them to what? Vocal shiva. Can I reduce my shurik to a vocal shiva? No. Why not? It is historically long. That is right, and historically longs are unchangeably long. They cannot reduce. So it's going to stay there. Yay! What's going to happen to this open, and now, with my stress moving to the end, it's now going to be propertonic. This will reduce to vocal shiva. So pa kud becomes not pa kuda, but p kuda. Okay? So I'll see that vocal shiva there. And I'm going to see that throughout the rest of the forms of pakud anytime I add these vocalic endings like a, im, or ot. So pakud, then pukuda, pukudim, pukudot. Okay? So what's going to be the most important thing to notice uh, on the cal passive participle? The most important thing is that shurik. Okay? You can really uh, catch that shurik with root two. You, you're looking at a cow passive participle if it's a verb form, okay? All right. Now, the, the other thing that, that Ross mentions in the section on 21.2 is that not only do you have forms of the, the participle under the normal conditions of the being in the absolute, but they could also be in the construct form as well, right? Because nouns and adjectives can be in the construct as well as the absolute. And the endings that the participle will have when it's in the construct are going to be the same that you've learned, right? Uh, no ending for masculine singular. The comet say becomes the pathak tav in the feminine singular absolute. Im becomes Canadian, serayod, a, and the oat doesn't change. So you could see just some slight variation depending on whether it's in the construct state or the absolute state. And we'll have some examples of that in our homework. So... We'll look at that uh, shortly. Now, let's, uh, let's move on to 21.3. In 21.3, Ross uh, describes what he calls the syntax of the passive participle. And here's the good news about this. The syntax of the passive participle is really the same as the active participle. Hmm. Well, that means we need to remember the active participle syntax as well, don't we? This isn't that hard because the syntax of participles is the same as adjectives for the most part. Okay? Because a participle is a verbal what? Didn't I have you say this over and over again with me? A participle is a verbal adjective. 
A participle is a verbal adjective. That means that even though it's a verbal form, it has adjectival characteristics. One of those adjectival characteristics is the endings, right? Because these are all the endings I know for the adjectives, okay? But um, it will also behave like an adjective does uh, in the three ways that adjectives can function. What are the three adjectival functions in Hebrew? Yes, attributive or predicate or substantival, right? You already know all this stuff. So let me give you some uh, English examples of this. So using English examples here, I will highlight the, uh, the passive participles and see what we're doing. The attributive use is where the, um, the, the adjective, in this case it's a verbal adjective that's passive, uh, is directly modifying a noun. It's telling you what kind of noun. Okay, so what kind of king? It's the appointed king, okay? So it's describing the king, and the king has had the appointing action done to him. So the appointed king. Predicate use is where we have a copula is along with some subject, and it's telling you what the king is. In this case, the king is appointed, okay? So it's not, not telling you what kind of king, but it's actually making an assertion about what the king is. So the king is appointed. Substantival, the appointed are going. Remember what substantival uses are? That's where the adjective is functioning as a noun. Here it's functioning as the subject. I could translate this as the appointed ones are going. But in the plural, I could also say the appointed are going. And that, that means the people who've been appointed. In all these cases, my participle is passive, but they're functioning in the three ways that adjectives normally function. Okay? Any questions about this? Okay, so for number one, which is our attributive, I've written here ha melek, and then I have pakud. Uh, does that mean the appointed king? Or is there something else I need in order for this to truly be an attributive use of the passive participle? What do we know syntactically is required for attributive adjectives and participles? That's right. Okay, it has to match in gender and number. Pakud and Melek do match. They're both masculine singular. But definiteness also is a requirement. I have to have the ha-ha rule following, right? So it's got to be ha melek, ha pakud. And then there is one other requirement for attributive participles and uh, now adjectives, and that is that they have to follow the noun, right? So I have noun first, then participle, and then they agree in gender, number, definiteness. Okay? So that's my requirement. Follow noun, and then agree in gender, number, definiteness. Okay, that's what attributive uh, participles and adjectives do. So, ha melek ha pakud. Literally, the king, the appointed, which we will translate it as the appointed king. You could also translate it as the king who is appointed, the king who was appointed, or even the king who will be appointed. It could, in some circumstances, be, be the case. All right. Uh, the second type will be the predicate use. And I just want to want to distinguish these, you know, remind you of what you already know, or maybe what you knew and forgot. Now, if you look at number two, I've actually got two options here for how to do the predicate use of the passive participle, okay? And I've got to tweak this because it's not right yet. First of all, with predicate uses, is there a requirement that the participle or a predicate adjective, does it have to follow the noun? No. It could go any order, which is why I have two possibilities here. Okay? So I could have Melek first and Pakud second, or I could have Pakud first and Melek second. 
Okay? But what is the case about predicate uses of adjectives and participles? They, um, there's no requirement for position, but they do have to agree with the noun in gender and number, right? But definiteness is not required. So look at hamelik hapakud. These agree in gender and number, but they're also agreeing in definiteness, and I can't do that here. Predicate uses of the participle cannot have the article. So it's hamelik pakud. The king, copula, is pakud, appointed, okay? Or, if I want to put pakud first, again, I still can't have the article attached to it. So it's got to be pakud hamelik. Appointed is the king. All right, so hamelik pakud or pakud hamelik. Either way, I've got a participle that's functioning as a predicate. All right? Does that make sense? I'm taking what you already know, and I'm just using a new kind of verbal adjective here, just a passive one instead of an active one. Okay, the third type is the substantival use. And um, I could just take pakud here and... I think I made it plural, so let's let's go ahead and make this plural. So pakud becomes not pakudim, but what? Pakudim. Yeah, it's got to go to vocal shiva. All right, and I want to add the article. So ha pakudim. So how would I translate that? Ha pakudim. The appointed masculine plural ones, right? So I could just say the appointed, or the appointed ones, or the appointed men, okay? Remember, with substantival uses of the adjective and participle, the, uh, the word is functioning as if it were a noun. There's no noun that it accompanies, no noun that it agrees with in gender and number. It is, for all intents and purposes, the noun. So I could say something like... Um, Ha pukudim po. The appointed ones are po means the appointed ones are here. Okay? So uh, here it's uh, my substantival passive participle is functioning as the subject. All right. So those are examples of uh, how passive participles will occur. Well, well, say that again. Well, um, if you're saying, are you trying to say the appointed kings? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's put it in the construct state. That's a good question. Okay. So when, um, when, a, uh, when a participle is substantival, it can do anything a noun can do. So in the case of this first one, it's the subject, right? And that is something that nouns typically do. But it could also be in a construct chain. And when I have a construct chain, I have thing one and thing two, or noun one and noun two. So participles that are substantival could also be you know, in a construct chain. So, so that's exactly right. So let's say that I want to say something like the appointed ones of the king. How would I do that? I'm going to put appointed ones in the construct. So how do I do, how do, I do that? Well, the first thing to remember is the construct never, never takes what? The article. I can't put an article on the construct form. So if it's going to be the appointed ones, I can't stick the article on appointed ones. I have to wait and put it on the second part of the construct chain. Okay? So we're going to just have pukudim. Okay? That's the masculine plural absolute. 
but I want to convert this to the construct. So what do I have to do? I change the ending, make it Canadian, right? So this becomes not Pukudim, but Pukudei. Pukudei. And I can't say Ha Pukudei because construct nouns can't take the article. But now I get to add thing two, which is the king, the appointed ones of the king. So now I'm going to put my article on the absolute, the second member of the construct chain. Okay, And so that's what that's going to look like. Pukudei Hamelech is the appointed ones of the king. Okay? Very good.